Bruce Wayne's toughest battle to date may have nothing to do with stopping powers and everything to do with repairing his broken family unit. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman Beyond the White Knight issue number 6 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up exactly where the jaw-dropping, slightly titillating finale of the last issue left off, Bruce wakes up in Harley's embrace. Oh, don't worry, they didn't do the full bat to see the book's joke, not mine, though it's certainly a joke I would make. No, the story didn't go all Wonder Woman 1984 on us, it's just that Jack hijacked Bruce's body for a little bit so that him and Harley could say all the things unsaid about between them, including their goodbyes. Bruce is, of course, still a little uncomfortable with how his relationship with Harley ended up turning out. They needed each other. They were there for each other during some of the hardest times of their lives, and after all, who knew Jack Napier better than these two? Who was hurt more by the Joker than these two? Though Bruce wonders aloud to himself if that's truly love or if that's just trauma, and I mean, geez, if that is trauma, then that explains so many of Batman's own interpersonal relationships. In fact, asking that very question and trying to discern the line between where Bruce Wayne starts and Batman ends kind of ends up becoming the narrative backbone of this issue. Harley certainly has her take, both as a woman and as a psychiatrist, saying that the reason she always called Bruce Bats is because at the end of the day, that's who he really is. And perhaps the real reason behind why Bruce keeps having all these terrible, debilitating panic attacks over the last little bit is because he's trying so hard to put the Batman part of himself to bed. Oh sure, the Dark Knight was never perfect and a lot went wrong, but as Harley goes on to explain, Batman gave Bruce that which he was missing, a surrogate family, people to love and love him back. And unless Bruce is finally ready to accept this fact, consolidate the two different parts of his life, and stop pushing people away, he's just gonna keep playing out this destructive cycle over and over and over again. Now, at the other end of the story, Officer Grayson and his compatriots go to shake down Red Hood for information. Again, this bit here makes a lot more sense if you actually read that special Red Hood two-parter. Jason has some very harsh words for Dick, calling him a sellout and a collaborator and a shame to the name Boy Wonder who caged a whole city in the name of order. Obviously, this leads to a massive fight between surrogate brothers that only gets broken up when Barbara shows up. The former Batgirl plays hardball and gets Jason and his own Robin Gann taken into their custody because, well, she's trying to build a fellowship of Robin Robins, basically. Jason maintains that Barbara is the good cop while Dick is the bad cop in this situation, though it's made abundantly clear that Gon questions that if any of them are actually good cops in Gotham. Now back over with Batman, a rather interesting thing starts to develop in his relationship with the Jack Napier AI now that he knows that Jack can take control of his body and now that he knows he wants things like reconciliation with Harley. He begins to wonder if he can actually trust him anymore or if that old sinister manipulative side of the Joker is just waiting to break on out again. The Jack AI tries to put Batman at ease, saying that's not the case, and he only exists in his mind so long as he's needed, so basically the only way Batman's ever going to be free of him is if he actually deals with his problems. And problem number one is the long overdue reconciliation with Dick Grayson. We actually see Dick picking up his son Jimmy from school, no doubt a loving tribute to the late James Jimmy Gordon. <laughs> What's particularly fun and interesting about this scene is that Batman plays talking to Dick completely different than how he talked to Barbara and Jason. For one, he just gets right down to business, telling him everything he knows about Powers and Terry. And the crazy killer robot conspiracy that's going on, Dick is actually a little hurt, going, ah, oh, really? Everyone else got a sweetheart to heart, but for me, it's just, oh, hey, here's all the case notes I have. It's here Dick finally answers the question that I'm sure as readers we've been wondering forever, and that is, how did Dick Grayson, of all people, end up falling to the dark side and under the sweat? way of powers. Well, as Dick explains, it actually took becoming a father himself to see how truly unhealthy and dysfunctional his and the other Robin's relationship with Batman is, and you know what? Bruce actively agrees with him. As Batman admits, as a child, he lost everything, and when he adopted Dick, it was almost like he was living vicariously through him, having the childhood that was stolen from him, and well, that just isn't fair. And as Dick got older and matured, and let's face it, became a much more well-rounded, sane individual individual than Bruce himself, all the bad stuff that was going on and how flawed their relationship was just became more apparent. Bruce had hoped that one day Dick would grow up and move on, fall in love with Barbara and start a real life, only that didn't happen. They were both superheroes. They were cultishly devoted to Batman and his way of life. Dick also questions Batman's motives for escaping from 
jail when he did? Was it really to try and put together the shattered pieces of his dysfunctional family, or was there more to it? As Bruce says, he broke out because he hated the idea of Batman's legacy continuing to hurt people, whether it was him in the costume or whether it was Terry. Now back over at Powers HQ, it seems that Jackie Napier had finally woken up to all of Derek's evil deeds, and because of that, she's trying to compile a bunch of footage of all the messed up crimes he's committed in just the last few days, showing that maybe just maybe she's got a little Dark Knight detective inside her too. Powers gets wise to this though and decides to keep her around only as a hostage from here moving forward, but hey, Jackie's not the only one who's turning against Derek as Dick shows up to try and arrest him, which ultimately only results in the rest of the GTO, including his own right-hand woman turning against him. Powers says that they have video footage of him meeting with Batman and that's all the evidence they're ever going to need to take him down and take him hard. Dick gets knocked out a window and Batman swoops on in to make the save, but in a very fun twist, Bruce doesn't so much save Dick as he gives him his old grappling hook and the opportunity to save himself. A nice little visual metaphor of Dick casting off the shackles of the GTO and once again becoming his true self again, and hey, even the shadows in the background reflected as the dynamic duo are reunited. This happy moment, though, is quickly shattered when Derek Powers in his new supervillainous guise as Blight ends up giving chase after the two, and I gotta say, I like the update to his costume. Mainly that this time it actually is a costume, and Blight just isn't a glowing green skeleton in a power suit. Powers blasts on Batman and Nightwing, and Dick ends up actually taking the hit for his mentor as the comic comes to a close. And so, that was Batman Beyond the White Knight issue number six, everybody. Another fun, engrossing issue wherein the action and mystery solving took a backseat to the family drama. I gotta say, Sean Gordon Murphy actually asked some very complicated questions about Bruce Wayne and Batman. Can the memory and legacy of Batman ultimately be a net good for his children and for the city? While the legacy of Bruce Wayne may end up being something a little bit more complicated and perhaps a little bit less perfect. In fact, I would say that's probably one of the strongest things about how Sean Gordon Murphy writes Batman in the White knight verse and that is he is truly, genuinely flawed and human. The story doesn't let him off the hook, where a lot of main universe Batman stories do usually err on the side of, well, he's Batman, so he must be right. Overall, I'd give this one another very strong 8 out of 10. We're heading into the home stretch now, and it looks like we're about to have another very high octane and satisfying finale. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.